and welcome to videos on linear integrated circuits. In this video, we shall see the basics of op amp. The block diagram of an op amp looks like this. Okay, it consists of majorly the input stages of differential transconductance stage. As you can see now, uh, the input stage is a differential input. It takes uh, there are two input terminals for the input. Which is V1 and V2, which is one is non inverting terminal and the other is inverting terminal. And this differential transconductance stage is followed by a high gain stage uh, because we know that the required high gain cannot be obtained using a single stage. So we have the first stage as the differential transconductance stage and uh, followed by a high gain stage. and this high gain stage will introduce the sufficient required gain for this operation amplifier and this is followed by a buffer stage where we are going to have the required lower output impedance and current carrying capacity, current supplying capacity and sourcing and sinking capacities will be provided with this outer buffer. All the three stages are provided the uh, required bias using this bias circuitry and this is the one which is giving the proper biasing for all the three stages and uh, in order to have the proper operation we won't have a compensation circuitry as you can see the RMS are going from uh, this first stage to last stage and it is also coming from the last stage to first stage so the RMS which is going from the input to output set corresponds to the feed forward compensation uh, possibility and the one which is going back corresponds to the feedback compensation because in order to achieve the required uh, compensation to increase the stability of the system it may be possible to provide a feed forward compensation where we let the signal go from the input output which is called as feed forward and it is also possible to achieve the required stability using the feedback compensation using this RMR which is going from the output to input as you can see this is representing the feedback compensation and this is representing the feed power compensation so that will be accomplished using this compensatory circuitry block so usually a block diagram of an term consists of a differential Transconductance stage. Transconductance stage is nothing but the applied input voltage is converted to the current and that is further amplified by one more intermediate high stage gain and there is further uh, the sourcing and sinking capacity of the current and lower output impedance is being obtained using the output buffer speed. This is a symbol of an op-amp. As you know that uh, it has got two input terminals and one output terminal to supply voltages VTD and VSS and uh, we have the currents I1, I2 and this is the output voltage which is given by uh, A1 times V1 minus V2 which is uh, the amplification of the difference between the input and output voltage that is this is V1 and this is V2. It is V1 is non terminal minus the voltage at the inverting terminal is the uh, voltage that will be amplified by A1 times. So let us see this uh, model of a non-ideal op-amp. As we can see now, this is an ideal op-amp. We know that ideal op-amp has got the characteristics like okay, it has got input impedance infinity, it has got the infinite voltage gain, it has got zero output impedance, it has got uh, infinite bandwidth, all those things. So that's an ideal open. But there are so many non-idealities. So those have been represented in, in, in the form of uh, so this is the representation of R out, which is the finite resistance. For this ideal open, if you add this R out, now this becomes now typical open with some R out. Finally, we have the input impedance RID. We have the input capacitance CID, and uh, this is the representation of uh, probability of noise introduced by this op amp. That introduction of noise by the op amp is being represented at the 
input of the op-amp as a noise source, a noise voltage source by uh, En square. And similarly, we have uh, the current source of the noise. Again, this is a representation of the noise per current source, and these are the input uh, biasing currents IB1, IB2, and the resistances representing the common mode voltages. And this is the output offset voltage required in the input so as to make the output voltage zero. So, this is the offset voltage. That is required at the input so that output voltage can be made zero without any input at in, without any input voltages. And this is a representation of the CMRR. To make the CMRR infinity, we need to have this much input voltage at, to be applied. So this is the overall representation of uh, the non-ideality of an amp in the form of the resistors, current source and voltage sources. The typical OPAM specification, you can see there are so many specifications, it's not only the gain here, one of the major specifications is gain, should be greater than or equal to 80 dB, the gain bandwidth should be greater than or equal to 10 MHz. Since you now we are talking about the settling time also, the OPAM should settle its response within 0.1 microsecond. The CO rate should be as high as possible. You can see this should be typically greater than equal to 2 volt per microsecond. The input common mode range should be plus or minus 2 volt. The CMR that is common mode rejection ratio should be very high that is 60 dB. This is power supply rejection. So okay, it is the ability of the circuit to reject the variations in the power supply voltages. That should also be 60 dB. Uh, output swing should be sufficiently enough so that uh, we can get a full output. So that should be 2 volt peak to peak. The output rest should be, so that as we can see now, this is a capacity load only. So it should accept only the capacity load. The uh, offset voltage should be very small. You can see uh, some parameters are very small, some parameters are uh, greater than or equal to. This offset voltage should be very small, that is plus or minus 5 volt. Uh, the noise should be less than or equal to 50 nanovolt per root hertz at 1 kilohertz. So this uh, we will understand in the uh, maybe in the next semester when we discuss the noise parameter. And the layout area should be less than uh, 10,000 square centimeter square micrometers. So these are the typical dimensions when we start designing the map. So please really look into each one of them. There are so many parameters considered. It's not only just the gain of an amp. As we used to do in uh, lower semesters for the amplifier, it is not only the gain. So these are the typical parameters considered when designing an op amp. This is a typical frequency response as we can see now. So initially it is 20 log of 10. This is uh, the A0 which is the DC gain. This is the asymptotic uh, plot, which is a dotted one. The actual one will be slightly lesser than that. I can see initially there is no slope, and the slope is 0 dB per decade, so it's a straight line. Afterwards, at omega is equal to omega 1, so there is a pole. Because of one pole, there is a slope change from 0 dB to 6 dB per octave. Now you can see this is now minus 60 per octave corresponds to minus 20 dB per decade, which is the representation of, which is due to pole at omega 1. And you can see there is a GB stands for the gain bandwidth product, where the gain is 0 here, 0 dB is corresponds to 1 volt per volt. And we have the second pole at omega 2. You can see now the slope has changed to minus 12 dB per decade. This minus 12 dB per decade is Equal into minus 40 dB per, sorry, this is minus 12 dB per octave. This minus 12 dB per octave is nothing but minus 40 dB per decade. And similarly, we have one more pole at omega 3. It introduces another minus 20 dB, 20 dB per decade uh, slope. So this minus 40, which is over here between omega 2 and omega 3 that is minus 12 dB per octave will become 
माइनस एटीन डिग्री पर ऑक्टेव और माइनस सिक्सटी डिग्री पर डिके दिस इज द टिपिकल फ्रिक्वेंसी रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ एन ओपन हैविंग थ्री पोल्स एट ओमेगा वन ओमेगा टू एंड ओमेगा थ्री कैन सी ओमेगा टू ओमेगा टू इज यूजली आफ्टर द गेन बैंड फ्रिक्वेंस दिस इज मोर स्पेसिफिक फ्रिक्वेंसी रिस्पॉन्स वेर वी आर लुकिंग एट द फेज ऑल्सो you can see this is omega 1 there is a omega 2 omega 3 wherever there is a cut off frequency there is a change in slope from the previous to the next you can see this is minus 60 degree per octave this will be minus 12 this will be minus 18 degree per octave you can see this is a change in the phase initially it is 180 degree it is going up to uh, minus uh, 90 degree so 180 to minus 180 is actually difference of 270 degrees Now you can see we have this as uh, the G B, which is omega G C, that is gain plus or frequency at the phase at that point. As you can see now, there there is a phase corresponding to which gain plus or frequency from this to this this happens to be the phase margin. So phase margin should be sufficient enough for an amplifier also so that it gives the fruitful result. So we just have a look at uh, how important the phase margin is in designing the Amplifier in the coming videos. So this is the phase margin. So from this, you can see this is a typical time phase conserve of amp. Now you can see the op amp is configured as a voltage follower. The input is given like a step, but the output is not exactly a step, but it is a ringing and settling down here. So once we have this type of second order response, you can see this is uh, looking like the response of a system having uh, two dominant poles now because of the dominant poles which are having complex poles we see end up with some oscillations and it is settled down so due to which we going to have uh, settling time the overshoot all those things now you can see this is the settling time uh, where the input is at within some uh, tolerable limit and here it is above tolerable tolerable limit it has not yet settled down now anything after this time that is t the response is within the tolerable limit that's why we call it as phase of second time i think what are the different stages of open to implement uh, its specifications uh, first stage is voltage to current stage which is a classical uh, differential amplifier first we are converting voltage to current which is the Because in, in classical differential amplifier we have this trans conductance thing. Trans conductance is applied voltage is converted to the current, and then you have current to voltage. This is differential to single single ended output. So we have seen that in the active load differential amplifier. So we have a current mirror. So the output is always obtained in a, a single ended mode. So that's what is voltage to so the current to voltage. And then again, from voltage will be connected to current during the second stage transconductance grounded gate. Uh, this is like a CS amplifier. And then we have current to voltage. Now we have a class A source or sink load because this is like output stage which provides the required source and current and sink current. As you can see now, this is voltage input and finally voltage is the output. We have voltage to current. Then current to voltage, again then voltage to current, and finally it is again current to voltage stages. So you okay, can see this representation here. This is voltage to current. Can you see this is uh, a part of a differential amplifier where the input is taken differentially in terms of voltage, and we have the currents flowing through M1 and M2 purely depends on the applied voltage. So that's why this is called as voltage to current, and this current, what is flowing here, will be dropped here across the load, which will produce a voltage which is single ended, and this is again current to voltage. This voltage which is available here, this is like a CS amplifier using P MOS. Now here we won't have a current which is a response mode which is proportional to the applied voltage. Now it's again voltage to current. This current will be dropped here in this MOSFET to Find the required voltage. That's why it is I2B. So this 
V2I, I2V, again V2I and I2V, we are going to form a two-stage open, which is the representation of this type of sum.